through the uh, the different areas. Uh, and if anyone wants to update the work that they're working on, that would be great. We can wait. We can wait another moment if you want. This this meeting is kind of notoriously notoriously get started late and ends late for some reason. <laughs> so weird how that works. Do you want me to pause the recording then for a sec? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So I I shared the uh, uh, the meeting notes with everyone. Everyone would please go and sign in. Uh, and the, uh, as far as the agenda for the meeting goes, uh, we can just kind of jump through and, uh, uh, let's start with, uh, if anyone from the design team is here, if there are updates from that group. Um, so I'm representing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, um so far as um i think the work left from maxwell is to kind of like put things together um in that google drive which um i'm going to send um to maxwell later um that's for maxwell then from um Benema, i don't know i think um she has been working with you kevin on the website right so uh, yes, yep. Yeah, she's been she's been working on uh, uh, some website stuff. I haven't uh, I haven't talked to her in uh, in a little bit though, so I am curious if she has anything uh, mm -hmm. uh, any updates on her end. Okay. Um, so, but but I can I can reach out to her. Okay. Uh, uh, then I see the um, the logo the one for the podcast that um, Kinsley. Yeah, Design. it looks good. Yeah, what is it? What does everyone think here? For the maybe I'll maybe I'll share my screen. How about that? Yeah. Uh, so I asked. Yeah, I asked for a chaos cast. Uh, icon uh, slash logo. Uh, and this is uh, this is what Kingsley made. So I like it. Uh, yeah, I like it too. I have a quick question about that. Will it say Chaos Cast like under it or next to it or something? So Just it could. Make... Uh, one of the one Our of the podcast. ways that uh, that I was experimenting with it prior was having the Chaos logo like it is, and then cast in lowercase and then the and then the icon at the end uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and then, uh, yeah but uh i actually i don't have the uh uh in my uh in my adobe i don't have the uh uh proper uh yeah, I, I think i think can stick on updated font style yeah yeah so so I was gonna, I was yeah, I was gonna ask him to add the cast in as another version, uh, but, but yeah, I, I don't have the correct font in my Adobe, so I couldn't add it. Uh, the other thing is, I think the uh, I think that logo at the end, that icon at the end, can also exist on its own uh, at some point. Yeah. Uh, so that's the like on the, for example, on the uh, podcast itself. We might be able to make that one of the key images that way if you uh when you pull it down onto your phone or computer that's the icon that uh that shows so we'll see i i haven't uh we haven't shown this to the uh the podcast people at all yet so unless they were looking in the uh the slack channel when that happened 
So, but for now, I, I, I oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Kevin. I was just gonna say I really like how in the corner those like curves match the O and the K out, like those the like length and size of the like yeah. that's the stuff that that is why I'm not a designer. I never ever would have thought of that. It okay. looks so good and it's so subtle and yet it pulls it together. It's so awesome. So yay, Kingsley. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, any other design updates? Um, so uh, I, I don't know. We're, we're trying to um, bring in the badging website design um, conversation in here as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can start from the next meeting. I don't know. Sure. Uh, yeah, we're trying to bring in those conversations in the website meeting too, as, as well as the development work that's beginning to start. Okay. So we don't work in silos. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'll probably, uh, regarding the, uh, the badging website, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, consult or give advice on it, but I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't think I want to be part of building a website. So I, I used to do that for a living. <laughs> uh, -huh. uh, and it's, it's, it's telling that I would rather do a WordPress website than build a website from scratch. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Uh, but I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Uh, otherwise, sure. uh, did you want to reach out to Kingsley, or should I ask him about adding chaos, the cast part to the the logo? Yeah, you can. I think we can. Since everything, I think all the conversation went on the channel. So maybe you want to update like on the channel, like the website. I think that was the website channel. Or maybe personality too, I don't know. Uh, yes, that's the website. Yep, I got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on the the website redesign end, we are, the homepage is actually uh, getting to a point where uh, we're almost ready to go live with it. Uh, so hopefully you can still see my screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Looks great. Yeah, we can. Uh, so uh, Bellam and I have been working on uh, getting these these sliders set, and obviously Django made the the background images. So we've had to tweak them just a little bit, uh, just the sizes and uh, stretch them in a couple places uh, so that they they fit with the slider. Uh, but uh, we think we're we're pretty good here. Uh, so we do want to, uh, for the slider, this, this button here is the main navigation button. This actually, this takes us to those, those key knowledge base pages. We do kind of want to think about what to say on this button. Uh, and, and we want to want to do that. Think about that for each of these, right? So if anyone has any thoughts on that, that would be helpful. I think on the newcomer one, mm -hmm. we could just say something like get started here or something a, a mm -hmm. little easier than, than Yeah, I thought, I thought about that. So if we do get started, there'd be some repetition from this text above, which could be good or it could be weird I, I i wasn't sure also i see a, a little typo in that contributing get started contributing there should be an r there oh right. okay Sorry, I'm just gonna write this down. Yeah, no, I just noticed it. I, I can file an issue if that's easier. Uh, nope, nope. I, I will. Uh, this I'll have to ask uh, Bella to fix that. The the text on this is actually embedded in the uh, in the image. Gotcha. So. Uh, okay. 
Okay. And then uh, any thoughts on the get started here? Uh, some, some other a different way to say this? I think, uh, I don't know, but um, maybe we can exchange the text, like, mm -hmm. Um, for like get started contributing to chaos would be where the button is and then the chaos new contributor knowledge base would be like where getting mm -hmm. started is like exchange the text I think this um get started is more action wise and then it's, it makes you even mm -hmm. want to click on the button even though you do not know there's a button there right we could uh we could try moving the button up Oh yeah, that's just moving point. the button up and leaving the text where it's at. Mm -hmm. I can. Yeah, let me... Oh, sorry. Um... Oh, too high. Well, we'd have to play with that a little bit. Uh, but but in general, you're thinking the button a little bit higher would be better. Yeah, and then exchanging the text, like um, having get started contributing to chaos in that button. In the bottom part down here. Yeah, in the button, in the button itself. Oh, in the button. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that'd be a so right now that's uh that's a pretty big button. Uh, the text that we would add, the button would pretty much stay the same size. I, I saw that the we. Oh, go ahead, Ruth. No, I said we could rephrase the text like um. Stop start contributing to chaos mm -hmm. or you could make the button gets the button could be get started yeah, and then like the text could be how to contribute to chaos mm -hmm. yeah i think that yeah sense. i like that i feel yeah I, f I agree with ruth in that i feel like a button should have some kind of action or like draw yeah. your attention like compel you to click it yeah we were we were with this we were going we wanted the entire slide to be a call to action yeah. So the so the text for the slide uh, was was meant to do that. Uh, however, <clears throat> so this could just be changed to how our community works. Uh, this one could be changed to ways to measure uh, the health of your community, uh, and then the. This one down here, this can be explore community health. That first one can be get started. Uh, C isn't a great action word actually. So uh, I have to think of a different action word here. Maybe learn about. Learn, learn is good. Or something. Yeah. yeah, learn is good. Okay. Yep, I will. Uh, I will make those changes. That should. Uh, uh, that should. Uh, I think that addresses the the button issue. Yeah, you uh, have comment on the chat, which is. Oh, really, I'm sorry. Uh, which is really um. Uh, good question. Uh, please go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking yeah, at the chat. Since the, since the text is embedded in the image, it might lead to some issues with the responsiveness of the page. Uh, it shouldn't. Uh, so the way the the way the page resizes and the way the uh, the text is in there. Let's see when we, when we resize the page, it actually 
it actually works fairly well. Uh, and the uh, the reason we embedded it was actually in response to those issues. So we were having uh, a lot of trouble getting the text to sit where we wanted it to sit uh, as the page was resizing. Uh, so the uh, so so ultimately, yeah, we did we we ended up embedding the the text into the uh, the slider to basically uh, take care of that. So yeah, it was uh, just uh, yeah, good. I was good, just uh, looking. Uh -huh. I was just looking at the website, and you know, the mobile view. Uh, if you uh, go into inspect it, mm -hmm. uh, some of the content of the slider overlaps with the button, and since uh, the content is not uh, uniform in each slider. I feel this could be a problem. Like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So resizing on the web is okay when we're. Looks like we're we're good at most. And if you change the slider from this position, you'll find that the next slide overlaps with the button. Interesting. Yeah, mobile isn't, isn't great. Mind you, when we get this small, it's not going to. Uh, it's never going to look great. Because uh, that at one point, the button takes up almost the entire like in that kind of default phone view, the button takes up almost the entire web image anyway, so. Let me see what that actually looks like on my phone. Yeah, there's overlap. So when the so the button is going to be resized when we when we do the text, these buttons will get smaller, and then the the thought there is maybe. Sorry. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Ash. I I had not looked at it in mobile. I had just looked at it kind of in dynamically resizing the home page. Uh, I mean, so I think some of the issues that we just talked about earlier will help us uh, resolve this anyway. Uh, so the button will be resized. It'll be about half as big as this is now. Uh, and then if we move the placement of the button from uh, So we, we can move the placement of the of the button and possibly the button type style. Uh, alternately, we could uh, we could actually just make the entire slide the button. Uh, if we if we did that, we could actually. Uh, uh, 
I kind of like that. What's that? I just said, I kind of like that idea. And then we could just have the action be the whole yeah. thing. So if we, if we make the entire slide the button, we can get rid of the button altogether and keep the text as it is. Uh, the question then becomes, uh, you know, do we like the slide without the button, right? And maybe, maybe we like it more. I might like it more. Thoughts? Just remove the button altogether. I like that idea. I, I plus one that, but I could be convinced otherwise. I, I but I like that. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward with just removing the button altogether. Uh and obviously there'll be there will be room for to make more comments before this goes live. Okay, so real real quick, we'll just jump down. So the we've been working on the sliders, getting those, trying to get those right, because uh, it's the main feature of the home page. Uh, next next step will be to uh, provide some content to the what is chaos page or section, right? So this will just be some short text uh, that describes at a high level what chaos is, and then it will take us to and about chaos page. Uh, Bellema has been working on what that about chaos page is going to look like. Uh, this is the page that's going to have that timeline image that you may have seen in the uh, uh, Slack channel. I'm sorry, I don't have a I don't have a, a quick image right now, and it doesn't look like I have. Yeah. Uh, but when we go here, so the uh, the the about chaos page will actually it's gonna it'll it'll be in the main navigation as well. Uh, these these abouts are gonna be simplified a bit. Uh, and then we drop down to the chaos uh, this section here. So the newsletter is probably gonna stay the way it is now. Uh, and then on the right we have the uh, we need some short text. That will populate here that talks about the podcast have some uh maybe some short text about twitter and then we'll have both of our the, both of the twitter accounts there and then just a bit of short text for the youtube channel uh and that short text just needs to be a probably a couple sentences that just describes what the content of uh that's going to be right. So why would you why would you want to listen to Chaos Cast? Right. So, so you listen to community members talk about community health, something along those lines. So that text needs to be written, uh, and it'll probably be written at the same time this is. Uh, and then uh, this is going to be reconfigured because we need to add the Ford Foundation to it. Uh, so these logos will probably go smaller, uh, and we'll either go with a uh, I think we'll maybe go with three columns. Uh, and then we need to connect these these buttons down here. Uh, and then the last the last thing we have is actually the uh, the translation button. So I don't know if you noticed, but the translation button follows the screen all the way down on the left. Uh, it's not great placement. Uh, so we had it up top. Right here. Uh, but it was the same issue that uh, Yash had noted for the uh, uh, for the slider, right? When we when we went mobile, the translation button was uh, sitting on top of navigation. So uh, the button itself, we have uh, uh, we can we have the ability to move it into any of the four corners. Right now we're in the bottom right. Uh, when we get into some places like this, it doesn't show up as well. Uh, it's good when we get to the bottom. It's good when we're at the top, I think, generally. Uh, but I have been contemplating moving it to the bottom left corner. If anyone has any thoughts on that. That's what I was going to see if that looked better, just because then the text 
it looks like it's a little more open on the left. Yeah. 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 So for those of you who may want to, uh, we do need to, as part of this website redesign, we actually, we do need to create some uh, documentation. For example, the editing that, uh, editing anything that has to do with the uh, uh, translation. It doesn't doesn't have anything over here, so we actually have to go in and edit directly in the plugin, which is a little weird, uh, and not at all intuitive. Uh, so reminder to myself to add that to this is G Translate. So we go into settings, and then from here we can. This feels like um, a really good project for people who are wanting to contribute with technical writing or documentation to kind of shadow you and write down the steps of how we do stuff. That might be kind of. A it's very much a shadow task uh, because some of this stuff is. Yeah, some of it's not obvious, so I, I wouldn't ask anyone to try to figure this out on their own. <laughs> yeah, or even if you uh, could like record your screen while you're doing something yeah, and then someone could take okay. that and. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that maybe you could record and like walk through each of the process and then mm -hmm. I, I, used, I used to write a lot of this kind of thing where I would, you know, just so, write down what the person says. So it would be something great for people um, that are looking mm -hmm. forward to contribute as technical writers or even writers. Yeah, I would, I would, I would love to have a backup website administrator. Uh, and that, that might be another good place to start, like someone who can, uh, kind of learn the ins and outs of, of this so that if, uh, if I step down, uh, or I'm unable to continue doing this, someone else can take over. Uh, so that would be, I would very much like to have someone do that. So that, that could be, a that could be a task to help that person get up to speed, uh, we can walk through this and we can write the documentation together and then uh, uh, kind of, and then we'd have a, a second administrator. So, so that's a thought as well, uh, if anyone is interested in that. Okay, uh, and then we have to, uh, to make that happen, we actually have to purge the, uh, uh, so actions, actions like this. So we, we've moved the, uh, we've moved the button navigation over to the bottom left. Uh, but when you, when you make changes like that, uh, for those of you who are familiar with, with website, uh, development, uh, a lot of that stuff is cached. So we have to purge the cache to, uh, uh, to make this change happen. Right. So. Uh, and we have to, and specifically, we have to purge it on the uh, the server side rather than the uh, browser side. Uh, yep. And now it's gone. Bottom left. Oh, this might be another option. Let's try that. Okay, here's the the other option is that we can put it in main navigation, that might be even better. So this main navigation is gonna get smaller. So if we do keep it in main navigation, uh, 
it would not be as uh, weird as it is now. Okay, I'll go ahead and look at that on my off time. So let's continue on with the. Uh, uh, so the, uh, so that's the the update on the web, web redesign itself. Uh, that's going to move forward. Uh, I'd really love to take that that homepage live. Uh, as soon as that homepage goes live, we can start populating uh, content for some of the other pages and change the main navigation. Uh, we're gonna we're waiting a little bit on connecting to the knowledge base. So the uh, because the the main page and the sliders are connected directly to the knowledge base, we want to make sure that the knowledge base is completely ready to go before we go live on the uh, the main page. Uh, so with that, I will. Yash, do you want to talk about the knowledge base at all? Yeah, so basically uh, we have added all the metrics and the models to the knowledge base and all the pages from the community handbook have been added as well. Uh, they, we are just stuck on an uh, issue regarding the search functionality of the knowledge base. It's something that we have been thinking about right from the start. And basically from what I have found with my experience that uh, we use some code, uh, short code, to pull the GitHub markdown files uh, to the website. Like when we say we want to render a page, we use some short code that you know pulls the markdown and sort of formats it and displays it on the website. Now, when we are using the search functionality of the knowledge base, uh, the search actually works on the short code rather than the content of the markdown itself yeah so that's leading to some weird results with the knowledge base and there is a possible solution but it uh it sort of you know complicates the process of adding a page to the knowledge base if you yeah. uh, look in if you look at the image what i have basically done is uh it was regarding the clones metric and I added the GitHub code for that. And below that, I added a HTML comment regarding the keyword uh, software, if you look at the image below, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a HTML comment that the users won't see, but uh, the knowledge base is able to search through this. So yeah. what I basically mean is we'll be hiding some of these keywords and the search can work upon by searching these keywords. And I would say this is a the solution that you're uh, you're proposing. I think it's a, a solution that we do. Uh, we only do it if we need to. So I think we we move forward with the search uh, as it is uh, because we haven't we haven't actually added the keywords into the pages yet. So when we start populating the knowledge base pages with the with the keywords, uh, the search functionality is is going to change uh, because okay. those. Uh, so so I think we we move forward uh, without implementing this fix, and then we come back to this fix if we need to. Uh, and very specifically, the the embed that we would be putting in here, it wouldn't be keywords. It would actually be the context tags. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, because the, the context tags are the ones that we're having trouble uh, getting to show up in search. Yep. So and then another another possible fix would actually be to just add the context tags as keywords as well. Uh, in the uh, in the knowledge base, uh, but we can hold off on that as well. Uh, so basically, I think that the search isn't quite perfect, uh, but we're also not done adding keywords to it yet. So once that's once that's done, we will go and look at the search and basically test it and see how it's working, and then we can make some tweaks to if it's not working appropriately. Uh, Right. And I don't know if you have received some uh, feedback regarding the design of the knowledge base. I don't think we have. Uh, we, we don't have that yet. Bellamo is going to look at that. Uh, so there is 
So for the for the uh, so we will at one point we will get feedback from her on that. But right now we have so we have three three content sections that need to be populated on each of these pages. Uh, in the community meeting yesterday, it was brought up about a, a contributor checklist. And Elizabeth, I believe that was your idea. Um, yeah, I wasn't at the meeting, sadly. So mm -hmm. I don't know how the conversation went. I just dropped the idea in the agenda. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was in the DEI meeting yesterday. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Not the community meeting. Yeah. So the the idea, from, from my understanding, the idea is to have a, uh, a checklist for newcomers. Is that right? Yeah, that was my idea just to have like a list of things here. Here are all the things you can do. And then that way people kind of just know and they can work off their list of all yeah. the things that they can do to learn about. Yeah. Uh, so one of the one of the thoughts, one of the things that came up is that this spot right here might be a really good place for that. On the website. Uh, I don't know what you think about that, um, but we do. We need to fill. We need. We have three spots that need content. So page description is one. The quick start guide for newcomers, I think, is another, and it, it already actually has content. However, uh, I think maybe we uh, we may want to peek at this and make sure that we have everything that we want in here, and then we could do right down here instead of community guidelines, we could do the newcomer checklist. And then uh, for the knowledge base itself, uh, I, I, I've actually I've been kind of wanting to talk to uh, Ruth uh, and Joya about this. Uh, I apologize if I mispronounced that. Uh, we just have one how to contribute folder currently. I'm wondering if we can break this down more. Uh, here, so. Uh, but we don't have to talk about that right now. Uh, on Yash's end, when we so when we click on uh, these documents, are there are there any ways to uh, can we add content to these pages, or are these dynamically created? And do we need to add content to them? Um these pages are dynamically created as you go on adding more articles to the knowledge base uh, they'll get automatically populated in their respective okay. categories uh, All right. but we do have some level of customizability i feel uh, okay within individual topic areas i mean I, I don't mind them terribly but i mean this play this page does end up being kind of a little plain which is maybe okay Uh, but at, at one point I would like to, I would like to walk through that with you, like what, when we click, when we follow through, uh, follow through the entire process to all the pages that we're on, uh, we need to turn this off. No. Yeah. Uh, I'll work on that. And then one of the, uh, one of the other things is, so with, when, in the search, if we, if we type something in that doesn't uh, come up, we just land on this this page here, which needs some attention as well. Right. I I do have a question for Yash. Um. So I I think um Jura and I were kind of like wondering because part of what our our tax was to do was to bring in the the contents into the website but um, I see that you've been working on that with the knowledge base so the first question is when we when we update stuff on the on the community repo does it automatically get um, updated here or is there an action that needs to go on before it's updated yeah, the content, the articles get automatically updated. They do not require any intervention. 
Okay. However, the page the page does have to be created on our end first. Yeah. So so once the page is created, uh, any content that you put into that markdown page will be automatically updated. So if you create a if you create a new page or change the the folder structure in the community repo, you will need to let us know so that we can change the structure on our end so that it matches. So for example, on the design page, this this design collaboration document, it's not populating currently. And that's because we haven't actually created, we haven't created the website page for this yet. Or if we have created the website page for this, uh, there may be no content in the markdown. I'm not sure which one it is. Right, if I if we go to edit the article, I can probably, yeah, so we have the, we have connected it, but we've connected it to the design contribution MD, but that's not, that must be an empty file. Uh, so if you populate content into that file, it will automatically update on the website. Okay. Um, okay. I, I think maybe, um, Yash, we might want to, um, I don't know how we do this. Like when we, when we are done with kind of like arranging the files and we are currently updating the files. So we might want to have a call with you where we just do most of the work like hack through the work on the call. Does does that work with you, Yash? Yeah, that works well. I think we can find a suitable time and discuss more about this. Okay. Okay. I I'm sure and I will kind of like reach out to you. Yeah, sure. So this one populates a little bit better. So we do have four folders. Uh, so the calendar does currently exist on this page. Uh, we do need to populate content here. Uh, this working group section, I'm, I think I'm going to pull. What I might do I is also pull from the handbook because we have like something like a list of the working groups in the handbook. Yeah, I was. If there's a if there's a document for that, we could pull from there, or we could pull from the participation page as well. We could grab this stuff here that's already here. Uh, I hadn't really decided yet on what to do there. So, uh, if you have a if you have a document that you think would work well there, let me know. Yeah, there's there's one. Let me let me try to get it. It's just like a list of the working groups around metrics, around software. Well, does it have any? Uh, so if it's a, if it's a long vertical list, uh, if it's a long vertical list, we may want to rethink it. Uh, yeah, if it's, it's kind of long. <laughs> yeah, my my reason for wanting to maybe grab it from the participate page is that right we have it kind of displayed in the uh in a three column format uh and then it does we already have the kind of description text and the meeting times and links in there uh so we could and i don't think yeah yeah so it's the metrics model i don't think it's here is it this one the metric mode, okay, there it is, okay. Cool. Yeah, I probably won't pull the created dashboard in, but, or some version of this, I think is what would fit in there. So I, I'm not sure what that would look like. We could change it to a two column format. We could change it, make, change it to a four column format. Uh, 
uh, a straight one column list. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that would fit well in the page though. Uh, but that's the con that's generally that's the content that I'm thinking for about right there. So Okay. Kevin, I think we're close to time. All right. Actually, two minutes over time. Yeah, we should probably end it then. Uh, Ruth, I wouldn't mind sitting in on that uh, uh, that handbook meeting as well. I think we'll also add you to the meeting, Kevin. So What's that? Can, like, we can add you to the meeting. Like, we'll find a suitable time for everyone. Yeah. Then just yeah. walk it. Like and if if you want, we can the, the next uh, the next web content meeting we can make we can make the handbook the primary focus of that. I, mm. uh, yeah. The only thing is getting Joya because it's kind of like I think it's too late last time. Okay, yeah, we can do a different. Yeah, we if you want, then we can do a different time, and uh, uh, we can move it earlier if you want. Yeah, or if, I'll. I'll contact Joya and you know work through the time into with Joya. Maybe an hour earlier might work for Joya. Okay. But if you if you want to make that a longer meeting, like a uh, like a two hour meeting, we could we could do that. Okay. Uh, and with that I think this uh, this we can end this meeting. If if you want to sit here and chat for a little bit longer we can. Uh, but I know the, the common working group will be here in six minutes. <laughs>